Today marks one year since the rollout of the biggest climate legislation in U.S. history, and most Americans don't really know about it. It's called the Inflation Reduction Act, which invests in clean energy as one of its top priorities. Its goal is to slash U.S. emissions by half in 2030. Joining us now to talk about it is journalist and founder of Covering Climate Now, Mark Hertzgard, to help us break down the legislation. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. As well as we're going to take a look at what impact it's had in the past year. So this landmark law, though, I mean, first of all, it has a confusing name, the Inflation Reduction Act. Inflation, people think economy. Acronym IRA, people think of Ireland or retirement. Uh, so <laughs> especially for people who haven't heard of it before, its main goal is to bring the U.S. to the forefront in the global clean energy economy. Uh, explain. The idea is that uh, the federal government will make it easier through tax credits and direct rebates for both uh, commercial and residential uh, Americans to basically shift to clean energy, to shift to wind, to solar, and shift away from the fossil fuels, oil, coal, and gas that are so disastrously overheating the planet. So you can now, uh, as a homeowner, uh, you can get a tax write-off if you are, say, shifting from a uh, gas stove to an electric stove. As a uh, company, you can get a uh, federal incentive to invest in a solar production factory or a battery storage factory. And there's quite a few of those projects actually right in the Illinois, uh, Indiana area. Yeah, absolutely. So far at the IRA, again, the Inflation Reduction Act has invested at least uh, four solar projects in Illinois. You just mentioned big picture. Uh, is the U.S. closer to clean energy future than we think? Where and, and that's so subjective, uh, you know, each person thinks differently. Where are we now in regards to where you think we should be? On the right track? Well, there's no question that, that the Inflation Reduction Act has led to a massive increase in what was already a very quick shift to uh, solar and wind and other renewable energies in the United States. The U.S., as you mentioned, Brad, was a little behind the rest of the world, especially China. China is still going the fastest on solar and, and wind, uh, but this is catching up a lot. Uh, the International Energy Agency, which is sort of the the, the, the main source of uh, data on this for the last 40 years, uh, their head, Fatih Barol, has said the Inflation Reduction Act is the single biggest policy on climate change that has been enacted around the world since the Paris Agreement of 2015. That's eight years ago. Now, your question, are we on the right track? We're on the right track. Are we going fast enough? That's not clear yet. We've got to get really, really way down the road of cutting emissions in half uh, globally in order to uh, limit the temperature rise on this planet. Of course, you mentioned the famed Paris Accord, which was 2008, I believe, President Trump. 2015. Yeah, 2015. President Trump then got us out of that, and now we're kind of in that direction again. So it's clear that climate change has become politicized. Everybody knows that. Uh, I mean, even down to its name. It is global warming, yet some smart consultant on the right, uh, typically opposed to such measures, uh, called it climate change versus global warming, a much more docile name. You really broke this story 13 years ago, uncovering fossil fuel industries, uh, PR juggernaut, to paint climate change as, 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 as kind of a liberal hoax. Um, what was your bombshell finding? The bombshell finding, that was a piece that I did in Vanity Fair magazine in 2006, and it showed what I call the tobacco connection, which is that the fossil fuel industry used the very same scientist, Frederick Seitz, who had spent the 1970s and 1980s uh, telling the world on behalf of the tobacco industry, no, 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 cigarettes don't cause cancer. Uh, it's your diet, it's your lifestyle, it's what have you. That very same scientist, Frederick Seitz, in the 1990s and beyond, uh, became the front man for the fossil fuel industry saying, oh, no, 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 this climate uh, stuff, that's all a liberal hoax. This is not really real. The scientists are making this up. Uh, and this was something that actually the original 
uh, PR disinformation campaign. That began in 1991. Wow. And uh, actually, a great investigative journalist, Ross Gelbspan of the Boston Globe, he unearthed the planning memo for that campaign. And this is 1991, Brad. And what that planning memo said, the core goal was to, quote, reposition global warming as theory rather than fact. And since then, in those 32 years up till today, fossil fuel industry has spent literally tens of millions of dollars driving that idea into uh, the public consciousness through advertising, through, I'm sorry to say, a lot of the, the media coverage, which has been uh, uh, not as strong on climate as I think uh, we needed. Yeah, part of the page for the history wonks out there out of the Powell Doctrine which was a uh, long ago Supreme Court justice who came kind of forth with a doctrine to kind of undermine fact, if you will. Now, dozens of right-wing groups have formed an alliance to create uh, Project 2025, which goes against the science and um, would try to dismantle U.S. climate policy. Um, how do we, we be wary of that? But then also, like, we got to remember, like, West Virginia, it is a fossil fuel state. I mean, it, it's, it is, employment engine is on fossil fuels. Like, how, how do we play this dance with such conflicts? That's a great question. You know, the Project 2025, that comes out of the Heritage Foundation, and mm -hmm. it is a blueprint, as you said, for essentially dismantling the, the current climate policies at the federal government level. This is something that Heritage Foundation has been doing since 1981. They've been giving Republican presidents playbooks on, okay, here's what you do to hit the ground running the first day in office, take care of this, this, and this, you know, rescind this uh, executive order, et cetera. So, uh, you know, if, if your viewers don't like that idea, then they should vote accordingly. But uh, you ask about West Virginia, that's one of the interesting things about the Inflation Reduction Act. Most of the climate provisions investments that are coming from uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, the, the, the work that's being done to fight climate change, those investments are going into red states like West Virginia, where, by the way, the coal industry employs very, very few people anymore. Right. Coal has been uh, uh, industrialized, the production process. Mm -hmm. They don't use many workers anymore, whereas solar and wind, the Inflation Reduction Act has now created an estimated 170,000 jobs across the country. Duly noted. Huge question for you. I need a short answer. So there's this article on today's Chicago Tribune. Uh, the quote is, it's like going deaf and if you like to listen to music. This is about stargazers trying to see stars. In part, they can't see them because of the Canadian wildfires caused by climate change. Then you have people like Jeff Bezos at Amazon espousing going to be carbon zero when there can't be anyone who uses more packaging for less product than Amazon while they're shooting rockets into the sky that fuel burn is not good for the ozone. And while America might be conscious, does it matter if places in Asia are dumping grounds with dead rivers for our discarded computers and toxic materials they contain. I know that was really loaded, uh, but I need a grade for you, just a grade. With, with all that being said, how is the U.S. doing? Give it a grade. How is the world doing? Give it a grade. I'd say the U.S. is doing it about a B minus now. It needs to go much faster. Uh, China is at about a, a B minus as well. Very fast on solar, still doing too much coal. World as a whole, because we're the two climate superpowers, I'd say B minus. And folks, we got to get it up to an A plus right away. We're going to have you on again. A smart conversation. And in essence, the thing there is we got to speed things up. Uh, Mark Hartsgaard journalist, founder of Covering Climate Now. Thank you so much for your insight. And uh, we are not right nor left here, but we care uh, about people that care. Thank you for caring. It's my pleasure, Brett.